Hello and welcome to Anglesey. It's round seven of the Thundersport GB Championships for 2017. And uh, heaven or hell, luckily it's not hell today. Quite a strong breeze here at Anglesey, ready for the Alto Digital GP1 Classics and the Avon Tyres Golden Era Superbikes. On the front row there, Shane Pearson, who could be champion today. His brother Jamie there, number five, who's here for a play again. And John Wright, number 114. He's the only rider that can prevent Pearson from becoming champion here today. Further back, look out in the Golden Era Superbikes for 71 Richie Thornton, championship leader, and Ryan Strafford, number 57, who won twice here yesterday to cut the gap down. Lights go out then as we head up towards turn one here at Anglesey, and it is Jamie Pearson that gets the advantage from his brother Shane. Coming around the outside there, just into third place is Thornton, although number 71 Thornton not on his usual yellow Kawasaki. I'll ask Sid about that in just a moment as they now make their way out of the hairpin and up around onto, the, shall we say, the faster part of this circuit, a bit further back there, number 64, Gary Haswell. Uh, Sid, uh, Golden Era Superbike champion there then, Richie Thornton in third. That doesn't look like his usual machine, that's a Suzuki. Yeah, it's uh, Andy Plasker. Andy Plasker, uh, good friends with Richie and, and his dad Bernie and whatnot. Um, always brings that s rad uh, just in case he has trouble with his own machine. And uh, very lucky that uh, he did it on this occasion as well. Well, actually, I don't think uh, Andy actually could come, so somebody else brought it along in his place. And, uh, oh, look, uh, look that's a nice, uh, nice little uh, depart from uh, the normal normal track there that Jamie Pearson has taken. I don't know if he's um, had a problem there. Or I not. think he's had a uh, mechanical problem there and got out of the way. I think that's actually what has happened, but uh, we will see in a moment. He certainly hasn't come round, so uh, I suspect that'll probably be the case. Um, yeah, on uh, they had an engine stripped down on, on their, on their uh, own machine, um, and as you do, stop it dripping all over the floor. Put a, like a tissue paper towel in there to stop the, you know, after the oil had gone, the drips stopped them going everywhere and forgot to take it out. Uh, so when engine rebuilt, first <laughs> Jordan Watley, yeah, having a, a bit of a grass track. Um, yeah, so uh, first time out on practice day uh, on Saturday and uh, it blocked up the uh, oil scavenger in the sump. Um, he heard it ticking, brought it in. Don't know how much damage he's done, but uh, that's what they found anyway. So, damage limitation on to the Suzuki for this weekend. It's not the first time he's been on that either. He knows his way round on a machine like that. At the moment, at the front end of this race is Pearson uh, in GP1 Classics. Then it's Strafford and Thornton. Then John Wright and Martin Stanier. So, uh, as it stands then, Strafford on for three wins on the trial if he gets this. Now, that will cut that gap down in the Golden Era Superbike Championship, that's for sure. There is number 55 just going through. Uh, Kurt Powell, who's uh, one of the freshman GP1 riders. There are a couple of freshman bikes just dotted around there. GP1's, of course, modern-day machinery, uh, but they're not normally too far off the pace of the shop. And here is Pearson then. Of course, we're expecting a... A decent grid of GP1 Classics for next year. Pearson looks like he's going to go into it as champion. Whether he decides to stick around and defend it, I don't know. But uh, it looks like at the moment he's on for his second Thundersport Championship. Of course, a former Golden Era Superbike champion himself. This is the man then that at the moment is leading the Golden Era Superbike. Strafford, 57 from Thornton. Now, if he takes the victory here, by my math, it cuts the gap down to 28 from Thornton overall in the championship. Further back there, number 19 and number 41, that's Paul Stonebanks, just uh, up the inside of Adrian Ottwell. Here is Dania, number 121, Andy Chalice in there as well. 95, we just saw going for a bit of a grass track, was Jordan Watling, and back with now your race leader into the banking. Um, aptly named hairpin, banked, positively cambered there for Pearson and there is Strafford who's not, oh dear we lost Tom Wilde in the background and that's John, John Wright. Wright and that now means that no matter what happens here although it looked like it was fairly obvious anyway regardless of the results now Shane Pearson is the Thundersport uh, Alto Digital GP1 Classic Champion. It's a rare mistake for John, isn't it? It really is. He doesn't tend to throw it at the scenery very often, John Wright. 
in truth, Sid, I don't think there was going to be any miracles. Um, no. Shane Pearson has had his name etched in this winner's trophy for some time. I tell you, I've heard a couple of people say that it's been easy for Shane, uh, and I think it's because he makes it look easy. Um, yeah, his bike is well prepared by TWP. Uh, is a oh, oh blimey! Dear, that's a really, really nasty fall there. That is awful. That is an awful little crash. It's Andy Meachin, it isn't is it? Andy Meachin. That's of course Ryan Strafford's teammate, if you like. Yeah, yeah. That's a really nasty high side. He's going to feel that later. <laughs> they will as well. Oh, He'll have a couple of bruises, but good to see he's up and okay. He's going to be walking like John Wayne later <laughs> in the paddock. So, yeah, glad to see he's up and he's walking away at least. There is number 55 again, Kurt Powell. He's out there on that Kawasaki ZX-10. Uh, but this is uh, Strafford then, Golden Era Superbikes. This is actually turning into quite a tasty little affair between Strafford and Thornton, Sid. Oh, ne sure. Neither of them really tend to make many mistakes. Yeah. So it's kind of just capitalising on whatever opportunities you get. That's right. Um, uh, but, uh, it, you know, uh, Ryan always goes very well here, and I think Richie Thornton knows it too. So not only is he not on his own bike, where he may have had a bigger go, but he's on Andy Plaskett's bike, and, uh, uh, you know, so he won't want to crash that well, obviously. Uh, so it'll be like, well, can I keep ahead of the rest and come in second, damage limitation, uh, boom, boom. I, I think... I don't know. I think that's what it was in his mind anyway, but uh, we'll have to see. I'm sure if there was an opportunity for him to take the lead, he would do, but uh, he just seems to be holding a watching brief to me. Because, I mean, not to forget this this uh, S-Rad that he's riding there is no slouch. He won several times on that at Donington, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it is a decent bike, but I'm with you. I think that he's probably just thinking, you know what, let's just get the bring the bike home. And uh, let's just try and limit the damage Ryan does to us. Further back, nice to see number 16 there back in a Thundersport paddock and on a bike. Craig Jeff from yeah, Barnsley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another Barnsley. Uh, oh, he's been itching. To, blimey. Ever since he left the paddock, he's been itching to get back, but he's been busy family building and so on. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, nice to see him back, so welcome, Craig. Uh, back in this championship, of course, next year, as I said. Shane Pearson, well, if he does decide, decide to defend his championship, although there's no confirmation of that, he is going to be up against some sturdy competitors. We know that this man here is thinking about entering the class, Sid. Yeah, he'll, I, he's going to come back. I think they've already got the bike. It's already uh, under construction, so uh, I think he'll be in GP1 Classics and uh, that lovely RC51 as he likes to call it, it'll be up for sale. I don't know, do you fancy it in a cabinet in your in your lounge, Steve? Or? Um, I would love it in, in a cabinet in my lounge. Uh, the wife, not so much. <laughs> not so much, yeah. Just nipping back slightly to what we said uh, before uh, Andy Meachin through the scenery, you know, yeah. it. Uh, like to show. Oh, oh, sorry, Sid. Hang on a second. We've got someone falling. That's Andy Chalice. Every it time is. Sid opens his mouth, someone's down <laughs> on the deck. And it's Andy Chalice who's got down, gone down. And he's fourth in the championship. Now, things are not secure for him overall in terms of taking thirds. So that's a big blow for him. Further back there, you see Rob Smith and Jordan Watling having a big look over his shoulder. But hopefully, Andy Chalice is okay. And you can blame Sid and send the uh, repair <laughs> bill to him. Because at the moment, he's sending people down left, right, and centre. Yeah, he's gone a long way there, hasn't he? It's a shame we didn't quite catch that on the uh, on camera, but uh, there you go, as long as he's up and OK. Uh, yeah, well, I'll try once more and I'll give up if, if uh, any more go down. But, you know, it, when people say about, oh, that would look easy for you to win a championship, well, th I'm here to tell you at Thundersport GB and probably most other organisations, you know, there isn't a championship that's easy to win. You know, you have to be there, you have to do it, and you have to keep bringing home the results. And, uh, you know, Shane's done a marvellous job this year. Uh, what he's going to do next year, I don't know, but there will be some serious competition next year. Yeah, we're expecting a decent sized grid in GP1 Classics. Of course, there's so many of these R1s about as well in garages uh, everywhere, and they are great motorcycles, so let's see what happens. It's also a shame that his brother Jamie has had to pull in for some reason or other, looked like mechanical and got out of the way, bless him, but he wanted to 
take it to uh, Shane. And I've got a funny feeling that if Shane's won the, well, he has won the championship in this race, if they get the mechanical issues sorted out, Jamie will take it to him in the second race. Well, yeah, especially now that, as you say, championship's done, of course, Jamie and Shane won Golden Era Superbike and Golden Era Supersport Championships, respectively, in the same year. And I, I believe it was actually here where the celebrations began because yeah, myself and you, Sid, right. went down for a little visit. We only yeah. went in to say hello and have a cup of tea. Four hours later, uh, we were stumbling out of an awning somewhere. Indeed. But anyway, last lap flag is out here. Shane Pearson's uh, home and dry in this one by the looks of things. He's got this race in the bag. Strafford, likewise. I just got my math wrong a moment ago when it comes to Strafford. If he finishes this race in front of Thornton, then the gap, in fact, comes down to 23 points between them uh, going into the final race today at Anglesey. Of course, from here we go to Alton Park next, but it's a one-day event and double points on offer. And I'm intrigued, actually. Alton Park is the first time we've had it at a uh, later round in the season and with double points on offer it's going to be a lot of drama over in Cheshire when we visit Alton Park later. Well it's such a drama if anything goes wrong that's the problem isn't it you know you, you sort of something goes wrong with your bike and you lose double the points if you DNF. Well yeah and big rewards if you get it right. Yeah of course yeah yeah. In terms of the freshman ride, uh, looking further back here, you've seen uh, plenty of number 55 there, Kurt Powell. He's second to, to Rob Smith, who is the Thundersport GP1 freshman championship leader at the moment. He looks comfortable uh, enough to stay in that position, certainly for here and probably for the season as well, but anything can happen in bike racing. The chequered flag goes out, though. Shane Pearson, congratulations. You are the Alto Digital GP1 champion two titles now at Thundersport GB for Shane. Superb stuff for him. I can confirm that uh, Ryan Strafford has just gone across the line in second, so he has cut that gap down by another five points to Richie Thornton in the Avon Tyres Golden Era Superbikes. Kurt Powell there actually listed down as the winner in freshman, so I got that wrong. Rob Smith didn't end up winning that one overall, so apologies for that. There is Shane Pearson then, winner in the GP1 Classics, and of course Strafford Thornton, you've got Jordan Watling there in terms of the top three as well in the Golden Era Superbikes. And in the freshman, Kurt Powell, Rob Smith and Aaron Collins. Right, that's championship done. Let's see if his brother Jamie now can bring the fight to Shane in race two coming up. Welcome back to Anglesey, round seven of 2017. You can hear the wind really picking up here. It's the Alto Digital GP1 Classics and the Avon Tire Golden Era Superbikes. This man then, the number one there on the front screen, he's done it. Second time in his uh, career, he's been a Thundersport champion. Here is uh, his brother, Jamie. Didn't quite go to plan for him in race one, but now he's got his eyes fixated on his brother and now he's got his job done. Jamie can really bring the fight to his brother. John Wright there, an uncharacteristic fall for him in race one. And as for the Golden Era Superbikes, Ryan Stratford here looking to try and get another victory in the class to bring the gap to under 20 as we then head into Alton Park. Let's see how we get on. A brilliant start there from John Wright. Third on the grid as we now charge up towards turn one. It's only a short sprint there. And again, it's Jamie Pearson with the whole shot ahead of his brother, Shane. And again, it's uh, the Suzuki there of Thornton getting his nose in the business as well. Here's Jack York 
uh, on these hilltop motorcycles Yamaha. Now Jack is out there, of course, on a uh, modern day machine. So he's a no, it's a GP1 Classic, isn't it? It is a Yamaha R1. Sorry, Jack Cork used to be a freshman, but he's now decided. You know what? I'll have a play on a, a GP1 Classic. So there he is out there on that. There is Jamie Pearson, then number five, and his brother Shane just behind him, number 35. One thing is for sure, they might be good friends, they might be brothers, but when the visors go down, they want to beat each other. And last time we saw these two properly going at it, they weren't on equal machinery. Well, they are now. I get the feeling, Sid. Jamie Pearson would love to beat Shane. Shane would do everything to make sure that doesn't happen. He said, if I, he said to me, after that last podium, that... <laughs> That he said, no, there's no championship to worry. He said, if there's a gap, he said, I'm chucking it out the inside. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the only thing is, I mean, you know, TWP does put a good bike together and uh, not taking anything away from Shane at all. Um, uh, but, you know, Jamie's going to be a bit rusty, isn't he? He's, um, you know, hasn't put as many laps in as Shane has of late. Uh, and, you know, he's probably got a bit of work uh, left to do on, on his on that lovely red R1 number five there. Um, we'll we'll see anyway. We'll see how uh, brave Shane is as to whether he wants to take a box of bits out or not. Well, here he is now trying to get into the slipstream of his brother, and is he going to have a look and a nibble up at Rocket uphill left hander? Uh, really tricky corner. Just in the background, there looked like Richie Thornton, who's third in on your screen, went a bit wide. And does that allow, no he's fine, does that allow Stratford through, Stratford's in fourth as well, so we've got the brothers to keep an eye on, and then this golden era superbikes, as it stands, Thornton is ahead, number 71 of Stratford, 57, down into the corkscrew we go, and Pearson now just trying to weigh up where to make a move, uh, it's a fast circuit here at Anglesey, and unless you make the move stick, it can be very difficult to overtake, Look at Thornton there, though. He's closing the gap up on the top two now as well on his Suzuki. Stratford in the early stages then, just trying to warm up into this one. Not quite there at the moment, but there's a long race here still left. At the front of it, it is Jamie Pearson. Just trying to chase down his brother. Here is Jack York. Just uh, losing a place there to Jordan Watling, number 95, who, of course, was on the Golden Era Superbike podium a moment ago. And this is a fast place to overtake. Nice move there from York underneath Jordan Watling. Here is Jamie Pearson then ahead of his brother, Shane. This is the back straight, although you can see it's not really a straight. It's sort of, you're cranked over. Can't think of anything that looks less like a straight. I know, it's strange, isn't it? <laughs> so Shane Pearson at the moment, just ready to gobble up his brother at any opportunity. Of course, the fact they are brothers, Shane Pearson wants to make sure that a move is clean to do anything too silly he has got the experience on the machine there's some tight lines being taken here from Jamie Pearson he's a bit defensive yeah slightly <laughs> he knows exactly who's in town and he's not allowing him through but I'll tell you oh. what Richie Thornton's capitalised <laughs> yeah, there yeah you see that's the problem isn't it and Shane will say do you know what that would not, not normally have happened and that's why he's taking him back straight away but it just makes you wonder, doesn't it? You know, if he's been more tentative because that's his brother in front of him. Yeah, well, he might have woken up now because Thornton lumps it up the inside of him again. And this will be getting uh, Shane Pearson a bit hot and bothered. He'll be a bit angry about this. The last thing he needs is a bite between him and his brother. And this is a brave move. No, not quite. He couldn't find the gap through. But he might just have the edge on power here as we go on to the back straight. There's nothing wrong with the speed of that Suzuki. But the R1, in theory, should just have the edge oh, over it. Do. And around the outside he goes. Look at the power being used there by Pearson. And again, Jamie Pearson at the front using an incredibly <laughs> tight line. Oh, but Pearson runs wide now. And that allows not only only Thornton through, but Stratford as well. Let's put the sun back in Sunday for, uh, for well, let's put the sun in Monday, hasn't it? So for Ryan Stratford. Well, yeah, we're back. Shane must be thinking, what the blimey is going on here? <laughs> Further back there is uh, Mark Biswell. He's obviously uh, entering fair few races these days as well. He's fighting for third in the championship, but this is a brilliant encounter out the front between GP1 Classics and Golden Era Superbikes. Shane Pearson, the champion, is at the moment staring fourth place in the face uh, overall, and he is desperate now to get past. Jamie's, Jamie Pearson's front end looks just a touch unstable. Did you see that rattling and shaking its head there? Pearson in the uh, past few rounds has just taken two or three laps to warm into things and then 
he goes gung-ho. I just wonder if we're going to witness that shortly because he's going to want to find a way through. And look at Thornton. He is on the attack here on the Suzuki. Three races in, and he's found some sort of setting that he's comfortable with. And now he's going to go around the long way. Again, the tight line from Pearson out front. Oh, and that means that Thornton has to sit up. And through goes Stratford. And through goes Pearson as well. And just shows you the slightest mistake made. And you're all the way back to this group. So Stratford now it is that goes second. He leads the Golden Era Superbike battle between him and Thornton. And Pearson moves up a place. Tell you what, what a good scrap this is, isn't it? Brilliant racing here. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Further back there is number 221, Ryan Ledbetter. He's one of our freshman riders on a modern-day machine. Let's get our eyes back on this one, though. It's Jamie Pearson from Ryan Strafford, from <laughs> Shane Pearson and Richie Thornton. You throw a blanket over these four at the moment. Brilliant. Ch chucking it into turn one. Doesn't have a name officially, but most people around these parts call it target. And then up towards the banking. Shane Pearson just trying to find a way through and he makes it. No, not quite. Strafford's got the line at the moment. Now then, what can Strafford do on his Honda? Can he close this gap down? Brilliant drive there from Shane Pearson, though, using the power and poke of his Yamaha, but the door is closed, firmly shut by Strafford. Now he's going to have to try and get the drive on the school straight as well. There's Craig Jeff looking down. I don't know if he's got a problem on his bike, number 16, but he's still up ahead of Ryan Ledbetter there. Who's going to get the advantage then in this brilliant fight so far at Anglesey up towards Rocket? We go once more and it's tight. Oh, wide line there from Stratford and up goes Shane Pearson. And now, finally, he gets himself back into a position where he can attack his brother. Because I tell you what, this has not panned out the way Shane Pearson thought it was going <laughs> no, to. No, I don't think that's quite as planned. Uh, it's funny, on the last podium, uh, Ryan Stratford whispered in my ear, Four out of four, Sid. Four out of four. And oh. uh, no, I, I, when he said that, I, I didn't think he, he, he meant uh, he was going to win the race, which uh, looked like he might there for a second, but I don't know. We'll see anyway. But uh, well, Stratford's only concern is beating Richie oh, Thornton. Of I mean, he'll be enjoying his battle out front. But oh, a bit of big grin on his face. But for Stratford, sure. of course, if he can get another win over Thornton, I don't know if Stratford's had a full house of victories in Golden Era Superbikes. Not 100% sure on that. But anyway, um, it looks at the sure. moment like it could happen, although this is a close race. Now then, Jamie Pearson, Shane Pearson, number five and number 35, both together. Shane has dipped into slightly faster lap times than his brother, and now he's trying to find a move. Is he going to be brave around the outside? He is, and this the defensive line wow. from Jamie can't be used now, oh, although he's oh, going to retaliate. Oh. Brilliantly done there from Jamie Pearson, oh, 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 and he runs wide, and Shane cuts back through again. The two brothers here. Going at it. There I is bet they're giggling at the, under their helmets, aren't they? Oh, these are races that you always remember, that you love to be a part of when you're getting in proper scraps like this. Of course, the laps just feel like they're going by in a flat as well. But Pearson, now he's got some clean air in front of him. He is going to try and lay the hammer down. Through the course screw we go. He does not want his brother's nose being poked in business again. <laughs> Around we go to start another lap and chucking oh, it into yeah, turn yeah. one and this that was a brilliant lap from Pearson he was a good half a second clear of everyone else and now he's started to find the heat in the tyres and I'm not sure anyone's going to have a response here so the champion although he's let's be honest been made to work for this he is at the front of this race outright further back there you see the rest of the field having a good old ding dong John Wright is still in this race Rob Smith leads the freshman from Kurt Powell this time and here is Jamie Pearson with Ryan Strafford and Thornton up behind of course this is just starting to spread out a bit now this race as we get to the thick end of it there is Stanny up with John Wright just up next to him and here is the battle between Golden Era Superbikes now then. Is that my eyes or does Thornton look like he's just closed up onto the tail a bit there? Of Brian Strafford in the closing stages. He might have other ideas about this four out of four. See old Jordan Watling there, you know, number 95, has quietly gone about his business and uh, in class he's been collecting third places all weekend, hasn't he? And it looks like he's uh, set to, to uh, bring another one home. And in class, it's, you know, they are the big points, aren't they, really? Yeah, they are. They are big points. So Jordan Watling would struggle to find him, his way into the battle for third overall in the championship. But uh, with a decent round like this, 
top five should be absolutely in the bag for Jordan, who's been uh, part of Thundersport since day one, really. Didn't he come into the glass late this year? He did, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he's not done every round. Here is Staunton then, and all of a sudden, this is not oh. quite as clear-cut as it was. Now, Strafford had a look over to his right there, and he knows exactly who that is. And he closes the door on Thornton as well. Traffic, though, traffic. There is a bit of traffic oh, here. Oh, I thought that might just uh, hold Ryan up there. No, oh. this might go around Rocket out, and he's going to try and find a way through. Neatly done there, neatly picked off by Strafford. And Thornton, though, he capitalises as well. He's not allowing Strafford out of his sight. We're running out of race here, but Thornton has his eyes on a surprise win here, having been second place of Ryan all weekend so far at Anglesey. There is John Wright just up behind Stania, and here is Pearson. Shane Pearson, that is, who's now in control of this one. Jamie Pearson in second. Now, the Golden Era Superbikes, first and second. Strafford from Thornton. See, Martin Stanley has had a good weekend, you know, of uh, in class uh, as well, you know. I mean, he's like, had some thirds over this weekend, and so uh, he, he's always confidently uh, come bringing it home, isn't he? Well, we should point out, of course, that now that the championship is gone, second place is very much open between John Wright and Martin Stanley, so those boys are going to be going at it. Stanley has not been a part of all season either, has he? No. So, Martin Stanley... I tell you, whenever he turns up in any class, he's always there or thereabouts. He is. Stanier. Good yes, rider. He is. Very versatile. Now then, here is Jamie Pearson. Second place for him. This is the battle we're waiting for, though. There's Stratford. There's Thornton. There's a couple of bike lengths in it at the moment. So it's Thornton's to try and find. Stratford's to lose. There is Jack York. Nice-looking Yamaha, that. Always intrigued by race numbers and why riders pick them, but Jack York, since he's been at Thundersport, has always gone for the 3-3-3. I suppose at least there's no danger of anyone stealing it. <laughs> and he makes up a place there, does York. You're looking up ahead at Jordan Watling as they drop through the corkscrew. Good to see these old Yamaha R1s, the early R1s. Sid, that looked like Martin Stanier just sitting up there. I don't know if he's got a problem, but yeah, last lap flag comes out and Martin Stanier's not going to cross the line, so all that talk. And unfortunately, oh. I think that might be it for Stanier. Is that me again? Might be. Check a flag will go out at the end of this lap. Shane Pearson, first time that he's got the number one then on, and he's going to see it through with another victory. Jamie Pearson looks set for second. But what about the Golden Era Superbikes? It should be Stratford's, barring any mistakes. And that would then cut the gap down to 18 points going into Alton Park. With, of course, 100 still available. Uh, sorry, 200 still available going into the last two rounds. Another weekend like this for Stratford over at Alton. We'll be, end, we'll be going into the final round at Donington and they'll be almost locked on points. Now, checkered flag goes out, though. In the end, he got the job done, did Shane Pearson, but it was a cracker at the start. And well done to him. Second place to his brother, Jamie, and I'm sure he'll have a look over his shoulder in a moment to find out where he is. That is done and dusted. Shane Pearson then wins from his brother, Jamie, in the Alto Digital GP1 Classics. It was Strafford that went across the line ahead of Thornton. Rob Smith won the Freshman's. John Wright was sixth. Martin Stanier didn't finish. There he is then with his champion T-shirt, Shane Pearson, Jamie Pearson. And third in the GP1 Classics, John Wright. Golden Era Superbikes, Strafford, Thornton and Jordan Watling again. And in the Freshman class, we've got Rob Smith, Kurt Powell and Aaron Collins. Confirmation then that the championship has gone to Pearson. We'll look at that in a moment. First of all, we'll look at Thornton ahead of Stratford. My maths are right for once. 18 points between Thornton and Stratford going into Alton Park. Championship done and highlighted in yellow there for Pearson. Still quite close there between Wright and Stanier. 21 points between the two of them going into Cheshire. And that is it from us at the beautiful Anglesey. We will see you over at Alton Park next month for the penultimate round.